petite labradoodle puppies at two weeks old. What are we going to see today? Are we going to see some eyes? Or are they going to be puppies who keep themselves in the dark for a while longer? This is the week two litter update for these petite Australian Labradoodle puppies from our Confetti Sprinkles litter. And these little puppies may or may not have their eyes open. Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles. And in this video update today, we're going to go through a little bit about what the puppies and Belle have been up to over the past week, what their current weights are. We're going to talk a little bit also about finding a vet, a trainer and a groomer for your puppy. And we're also going to look forward to what might be happening over the next week. So these little Labradoodle puppies are really doing well. They are such a sweet little family. I just love how petite they are. I think it just makes them even more adorable uh, just because they are so tiny and almost unreal like because they are so small. But make no mistake, even though they're small, they have big personalities in these tiny packages. They also are quite capable of letting all of us know if something like this is happening. So if you look back here behind Belle, you'll see that, oh, oh, we've got a puppy that's on the wrong side of mom. And that little puppy is green collar boy. And he's now trying to figure out, hmm, how am I going to work my way back over here? Now you can see the puppies are far more agile. They're much more robust puppies. So they're stronger and able to solve problems better. So Green might be able to figure out that he needs to go around, which is what he's trying to figure out how to be able to accomplish. But he doesn't have enough leverage back here to actually be able to climb over Belle. And unless she moves, he's just going to be stuck in that corner. So then what happens? Well, he squawks. He lets us know. And when he squawks, he's also letting Belle know. Now, quite often when she's nursing like this, not just Belle, but any mama Labradoodle, any mama dog at all, when they've got their puppies nursing and there's one that's in the wrong spot, they'll let them squawk. They'll just listen to it. It's all part of more of the instinctive way that dogs raise their puppies. They don't have the same maternal feelings that we do as people. It's just like a lot of people think, oh, when our mama Labradoodles go home, they must be so sad to leave their puppies. Heck no, they are counting down the days. Once we get to the point where they, the puppies are mostly weaned, which is around five, five and a half weeks, those moms are just counting down the days until we say, hey, your guardian's here to take you home. And then they're like, woohoo, freedom. And no, they do not miss their puppies whatsoever. Do they know their puppies in the future? Absolutely. For the rest of their lives, they will always recognize that there is a connection, but they don't have a mother-daughter, mother-son connection like we do with our own children. For a dog, the job is to protect the puppies, feed the puppies and get them to be independent by the time that they're weaned. And then that's it, their job is done. They don't have any more serious emotional attachment. They are not going to like their puppy more than they're going to like any other type of dog that they meet. So in this litter, for example, we're hoping that one of the girls will be actually joining Belle and her guardian family as the next generation of Belle's pedigree for our Van Nuys Labradoodles program. So Belle will go home when the puppies are about six weeks old. She'll be at home for a couple of weeks and then it'll be time for her puppy to go home and join her. Sure, she's going to recognize her puppy. She's going to know, I know this dog, but that's it. She's not going to have anything that says, 
oh, this is my daughter. Oh, this is a special puppy. I'm going to have a clo closer bond with it. So sometimes that's confusing to people. Sometimes it's disappointing. Sometimes even people become upset and think that, oh gosh, this mama dog hasn't got very many maternal feelings or instincts, but it's not really true. We tend to humanize our dogs too much sometimes. It's important to always remember they are dogs, not people. And while they reflect our own emotions back to us many, many times over, and while they're able to communicate deep feelings with us, we always need to remember that how a dog interprets a feeling is very different from how we do. Yes, our dogs love us. Yes, our dogs have feelings for their puppies, but it's not the love that we have for our children. So based on all of that, when a mama dog is here nursing and she has four of her five puppies who are able to nurse happily, she's going to ignore the one that isn't being served because the greater good is looking after these puppies. Now eventually, if the puppy keeps squawking enough and we don't immediately come in to help the puppy, she will move herself to some degree to let him get his way over here but it won't be for quite a while. So that sometimes is reflected in the weight gain of a puppy during the day. If we have a puppy who's stuck like Mr. Green Collar here, then we're going to see that that puppy probably isn't going to gain as much weight overnight as his siblings are, assuming that he's stuck back there and misses an entire feeding and none of these ones do. So this was a great opportunity that just happened because he went back there and Belle moved herself back here to sort of explain how these things work in dog world. Sometimes our dogs do things and we, we feel that it's inappropriate because it doesn't mirror how we do things as, as people. So it's really important uh, to understand and try to think like a dog. Of course, we don't know exactly what our dogs are thinking. A lot of this comes from experience and sort of putting the pieces together. And we may be quite wrong about some things. Uh, so this is important though that you get to know your dog well. You understand what your dog is communicating and what their actual thought process is because that's really going to help you get to know your dog and that when you get to know your dog is really key to being successful with everything in your relationship with your dog you'll be able to know right away just by looking at your dog oh they're not feeling well you'll know is it something serious or is it something that eh, probably is just a minor tummy upset for instance You'll understand when you're training your puppy, this method that I'm using isn't working. They're not understanding me. You'll know when they're happy. You'll know when they're sad. You'll know when they're angry. Dogs don't really get angry like we get angry, but dogs get irritated. So lots of times we always have more than one dog in our house because we have three of our own dogs. They all live together, the, all three of them have lived together for their entire lives. They have always, in that, throughout their entire lives, had multiple different dogs coming and going from their home. So that's their lifestyle. But they'll still become irritated sometimes when a dog that doesn't belong here normally comes and joins them. That dog might do something completely innocent that's not according to how they see how things should go. For instance, they might get in front of them when it's time to go out the door to go out and have fun and play ball in the backyard. That's not acceptable because that's not how a dog hierarchy works. So they may have a fight. Is it going to be one where they're trying to rip each other's throats out? Heck no. It's going to be a It's going to be very short lived. It's going to sound awful. You're going to see teeth. There's not actually going to be any biting though. It's all posturing and it's all a communication. That's how dogs say, hey, you're butting in line. Get lost, buckwheat. I'm the one who's got the prime position here because this is my house. And so I'm the boss, you go to the back of the line. That's basically what they're saying. 
So for us, it's really important that we can see that body language, understand it, and do things to intervene so that arguments don't ensue or arguments don't escalate. Ripple lots of times gets annoyed if another dog gets her ball, for instance. Ripple thinks that all the balls should be hers at all times. So it's important to distract her, know how to get along, get, get to communicate with her. That is totally fine. Lots of times we'll have multiple uh, balls in our, our pockets, for instance. So same with Belle here. I just put the puppy back. I'm certainly not going to tell her that she was wrong or she missed something or that she's a bad mom because she absolutely isn't. It's just important to understand that to Belle, the thing that she needs to do is look after the needs of the group before she looks after an individual. So that's just a little short bit there on some dog psychology. Right, Belle? You got anything to say about that? And so right now she's telling me, I can tell she's telling me she's really happy that I'm here. Everything is just the way she wants it. The puppies are nursing, they're quiet, and she has some company in the box because she loves to have company. So now, what have the puppies been doing this past week? Not much. They've still pretty much been doing what you see right now, eating, and then they sleep, and then they eat some more. Uh, now, sometimes people think, gosh, I don't think I want to have a white dog because it must be so hard to keep them clean. Well, if you look at Belle, she's absolutely spotless. Uh, she has no dirt on her, and being a mom is the dirtiest job there is. You're constantly in muck because you're cleaning up poop after your dogs all the time. You don't get a chance to have your regular beauty treatment at home, which would include more brushing and more combing. And look at her, her coat looks beautiful, it's still shiny, and she is as sparkly white as she always is, with her pretty white tummy showing through. Right, baby girl? If anything, she has a little bit more darkness around her mouth, um, and that's just because because she is picking up after her puppies. So there's a little bit of staining that comes from that. And that's totally natural. But you don't have to ever be concerned if you get one of the lighter color puppies because they do not require any extra maintenance for keeping them clean. One of the really nice features of ALDs is if they come in and let's say we've been out in the mud and Belle had mud up to here on all of her paws. You think, oh no, she's going to be filthy now. If you just leave her for 20 minutes, that mud will start to fall off on its own. And any that hasn't fallen off of her coat just requires maybe four strokes of the brush. The dirt's gone and she's going to look just like this again. Oh, she says, I'm not showing you my paw. Excuse me. <laughs> she's communicating there and making it quite clear what she's trying to say. So white dogs do not get any dirtier, any faster than black dogs. It doesn't matter if, what color they are, this will happen. In many respects, I prefer the fact that we have two or three dogs rather who are all light colored on their paws. They all have white legs and paws because I can see when they're dirty. Whereas like with Orca, for instance, or Noisette, who are both dark, dark, dark colors on their paws, if they're full of mud, I can't always see it, and so I let them in the house thinking it's fine, and then my house is dirty. Whereas if I can see it on their feet and their legs when they come in, I can put them in the laundry room, I can let them dry off for a minute, go in, do a quick brush if I need to, and then I save myself a lot of extra work in terms of vacuuming or sweeping up in the house. And if your dogs are like ours and they like to go on the furniture, it also saves the furniture. Oh my goodness, bless you. It also saves the furniture from getting some dirty paw marks on them. Mostly what our dogs do is when they come in from outside, they rush like mad into the bedroom and Ripple always jumps right onto the bed. She rolls around for a while. That's, that's her favorite towel. Uh, so I do like to make sure that she's nice and clean before she comes in. So the puppies in terms of development for this week, uh, the only thing that may have happened, which we'll find out shortly, is eyes opening. So why are their eyes not open if, the, if this is day 14? Sometimes they don't open until, until day 20, sorry. Sometimes they open at day 10. It's all when the puppy's uh, internal nervous system is ready to absorb the stimuli that comes from sight. 
Now dogs don't see as well as we do. They don't see as many colors as we do uh, and their vision doesn't have the acuity that we do. However, they can see in the dark and we can't. So they don't notice if the lights are on or not. They know the lights have gone off in their mind. They know that something's changed, but it doesn't uh, affect their ability to see things. So they can see just as well in the dark as they can in the light. Right, girl? Yeah. So whether or not their eyes are open is just simply a matter of how developed their nervous system is. And that's the same for their ears. That will be what happens after their eyes open. Now you can see how much stronger the puppies are. I mean, look how they're nursing here. You can see that they're really going after getting that milk to flow. And so when they're pulling like that and when they're kneading with their paws, what they're trying to do is to stimulate the flow of the milk and get it to be faster. So they're eating more, they're eating faster, and they're getting more demanding in how much they do want to eat. So that is alone in the past week is a huge change. And from the time they were born, it's an enormous change. When they're first born, they can hardly hang on and, and nurse. Now they're being quite demanding about how much milk flow they're getting. As for Belle, nothing's changed for her. She's still eating well. She's still eating substantially more than she did. She's really enjoying her bones. Uh, she enjoys pretty much all of her meals. The only thing Belle doesn't really have uh, a particular fondness for is fish. And I do integrate fish into the dog's diet on a regular basis. So when we're feeding our dogs, it's very important that we rotate the different proteins. And why is that? The reason why that's important is because each protein provides a different benefit. So for instance, one will be high in zinc, one will be high in iron, one will be high in calcium, and so on and so forth. So that's why you don't want to just feed your dog beef or just chicken. And very importantly, it's important that you do not just feed fish. Some people think their dogs have food allergies and need to have a restricted diet and move to a fish only diet. That's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. While it may look like you're doing the right thing and helping your dog's itchy skin, inside you're doing considerable harm and as your dog gets older, there will be numerous health complications that will result from feeding your dog only fish. The same will, say, will hold true if you don't feed them any red proteins. Red proteins are very important and need to comprise at least half of your dog's diet. So there's lots of other things you can do if your dog is itchy um, and there's lots of other things you can do if, if you think they have a sensitivity. 99 times out of 100 it's not the food, it's the environment and that when you change the food, you're simply providing a different level of defense within the immune system that's combating the environmental problem. There's all sorts of supplements you can take and all sorts of things you can do to boost your dog's immune system. And if they're not eating a raw diet, if they're on a kibble diet, their immune system is quite a bit compromised because they do not have that same overall good health um, as a raw fed dog does. It'd be similar to if you ate um, only fast food and cereal all the time and didn't eat any uh, natural vegetables, natural beef and chicken and types of things like that. If you were getting your protein from McDonald's and A&W, um, your diet would consist of mostly carbohydrates and a lot of chemicals, which is what a kibble diet is, um, as opposed to natural food. So your body looks fine and you might feel fine for a while, but inside you are actually doing considerable damage to your body. So it's really important to rotate. Um, and the other thing we always recommend is that you also rotate manufacturers. That's why we have more than one because how uh, one manufacturer makes their food and what micronutrients they have in there in terms of the vegetable matter and fruits is going to be different from another one. So again, every micronutrient makes a difference to a dog's diet too. Pumpkin seeds, for instance, offer something. Celery seeds do. 
all sorts of things offer different things and some foods will only have the inexpensive and easy to obtain vegetables and fruits such as perhaps carrots, apples, and uh, maybe rutabagas. Those are all cheap, same as cabbage. Uh, they're always in plentiful supply. So that's easy to throw in and say that, yeah, we got some fruits and vegetables in here. Um, whereas what you need is a, is a different blend. So I like to use products that incorporate more uh, conscious choices so that we have some kale, we have some green lettuce in there, uh, we have some ginger in there, we have all sorts of things, uh, dandelions. All of these things provide a benefit to our dogs and they need to all come together in order to allow them to thrive rather than just survive. So there's your little story and all of that. Uh, you will be getting an educational video this week on choosing your vet, your trainer, and your groomer. Please keep in mind this video was made before we had such a shortage of vets and that groomers became so booked up. You'll want to start looking right away for your vet trainer and groomer. These are the three most important partners in your dog's life besides us as your dog's breeder. Uh, so you'll want to get familiar with them, make sure you're comfortable with them. Uh, there's lots of tips in the video that will be coming out to our families telling you just exactly what you need to know how to choose one wisely and the biggest help of all is post on our private community group say hey I'm Susan and I'm getting a puppy from the confetti sprinkles litter I live in Hope BC who do you recommend as a great vet trainer and groomer you also get some advice sometimes on who not to choose and sometimes that can be even more important than the recommendations on who to choose so now let's do our puppy update, find out if we've got any open eyes and find out what everyone's current weight is. So I can tell you their weights are really doing nicely. And we're going to do the puppies in birth order like we always do. And we're going to start with Mr. Blue Collar, who is puppy number one. And he's this darker caramel guy down here. Hi, buddy. Hi. Oh, he says, really? I was just having a great time there, getting all tanked up. We're gonna adjust his collar a little bit because he's growing. So Mr. Blue is now 646 grams. And do you see any peepers there? Nope. Mr. Blue says, no, I do not want to see this big, dark, cruel world out here. I'm gonna just keep my eyes shut. So he's just not ready. And that's just fine. He's doing well. There's no concerns whatsoever. He's in absolutely fabulous condition. This is a beautiful puppy. He has a, a, a very beautiful uh, example of what an ALD head should look like. He's small, but he has the perfect body condition. He is nice. He is blocky. He is substantial. So he is all proportionate for his size. This is exactly the same look that you would get in a larger Labradoodle, just they would be bigger. And that's what you want to look for. In these smaller puppies, there's some breeders who have what they call micro minis. Um, you want to always look. You don't want some little tiny itty bitty thing that looks like some teacup poodle. You want them still to have that labby look, that big, nice, substantial look to them. Even Belle, very petite girl, but very beautifully proportioned with a lovely head. Next, we have Pink Collar Girl. Ooh, I can quickly get her before she attaches. Pink Collar is this pretty little caramel party girl. She is just getting more and more pretty, and look what she's got. She's got two open eyes that she's sharing with you. Yeah, she is the first puppy to open her eyes in the Confetti Sprinkles litter. And Miss Pink is 553 grams, which makes her the smallest puppy in the litter. So that's another thing. Just because a puppy's first born or the biggest or the last born or the smallest does not mean they're going to do things faster, sooner than the others. Next, we've got Red Color Girl. And Red Color is our other caramel girl that is an abstract, not a party. Here she is, and do we see any eyes in this little lady? 
Well, we've got a little bit of a slit going on on the left eye here. You can see just the tiniest little bit over here is starting to open up. But otherwise, she too, she says, no, not quite ready. And again, you can see this absolutely gorgeous blocky head, nice substantial proportionate body. And Miss Red is 588 grams. And she's got a nice full tummy. Then we have Mr. Green Collar. And Mr. Green is also one of our caramel parties. He is the one who was on the wrong side of Belle there. And he's trying to make up for it now with a big feast. And Mr. Green is what we call an extreme party, which is what Belle is. But Mr. Green has more markings than his mom does, especially on his head here. And he has this adorable one eye being dark and one eye being white. I just love it when they have the two different eyes. And he has no interest in opening his eyes at all. There aren't even any slits there, so they're definitely not opening anytime soon. Mr. Green is the smallest puppy in the litter. He is 564 grams. And I'm going to put him back where he was eating so that he can continue since he was a little bit behind the others there while he was on the on the wrong side of the fence. And then last but not least is Miss Black Collar Girl, who is our largest puppy, and she is substantially larger. She is 723 grams. Does this mean she's going to be the biggest puppy when she grows up? Mm -mm. She could easily end up being the smallest. Maybe she'll be the biggest. Who knows? But what they are right now is not indicative of what they'll be when they grow up. So she's an extreme. She has really beautiful markings on her body that are just starting to come into uh, where you can see them. Right here, she's got a big, beautiful spot of caramel here as well. They're just lighter. And then, uh, just a minute and I'll give her back to you. And then over here on the other side, and if she's cooperative, there we go. This side you can start to see a little bit more than the other side. So that's just going to continue to darken as she gets older. I'd let, I'd let you clean her in just a minute. Right now, you don't see them as much. But when she was born, you'll remember, you could hardly see any color even on her face. Her ear color and on the sides of her face were both quite light. And <laughs> Gail is absolutely insistent she needs to be clean. She too has her eyes sealed shut. So we've got our smallest puppy with her eyes open and our biggest puppy with her eyes still closed. And she is, as I said, 723 grams compared to uh, the next biggest puppy who is blue at 646 grams. So she's almost a whole hundred grams bigger, which is uh, a considerable difference given that they are all so tiny. So they're all doing well. We hope you really enjoyed this update. Uh, if you've got any questions around diet for dogs, or if you're curious about behavior, how to understand your dog's body language, if you want some recommendations on great resources to learn more about understanding your dog's body language, uh, just please ask in the comments here on YouTube. Uh, we really enjoy having your comments. I love to chat to you about the dogs, um, and I just love to hear from you. Uh, plus, it's a bonus for us with the algorithm, so it's a win-win. And if you don't have time for that, uh, a thumbs up is always really appreciated. And we hope we'll see you again next week when we do our week three update, uh, when I'm sure all of these peepers will be wide open. And we may also have puppies with open ears. Thanks so much for watching.